uh, online meeting of the uh, South Barrowford District Council. This is the first time this has happened in history. Um, due, so going on to the formal bit, uh, due to the level four COVID-19 restrictions, it is not possible for the South Barrowford District Council to conduct this meeting with its members uh, and the public physically present. So all participating members count for the purpose of the meeting quorum in accordance with clause 25B of Schedule 7 of the Local Government Act 2002. This meeting will be recorded and made available on the Council's YouTube channel via a link to the Council website. A summary of the meeting will also be made, be made available on the Council's website shortly following the meeting in accordance with clause 47A of the Local Government Official Information and Meeting Act of 87. And also please bear in mind that this is a public meeting and your conduct should be no different to that of a normal council meeting. Right, uh, with regards to the affirmation, Councillor Plimmer, would you like to read the affirmation, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We pledge that we will faithfully and impartially use our skill, wisdom and judgment throughout discussions and deliberations ahead of us today in order to make responsible and appropriate decisions for the benefit of the South Wairapa District at large. We commit individually and as a council to the principles of integrity and respect and to upholding the vision and values we have adopted in our long-term strategic document in order to energize, unify, and enrich our district. That's, thank you, Councillor Plimmer. Uh, first of all, apologies. Uh, we have no, no apologies being received. Uh, A2, are there co any conflicts of interest from any of the councillors? Take that as a no. Good, we move straight on uh, to public participation. Uh, our public particip participation today is, uh, is only Lee Carter. Uh, Lee, you have five minutes, including a time for questions. Suzanne will hold up a finger to the camera after four minutes to let you know uh, that you have one minute left. And then uh, a T when the time is up and your video and your audio may be disabled. Um, public participation, uh, you're welcome to stay online for as long as you would like, as you, as you mentioned, Lee. Uh, we will discuss what you have presented under agenda, agenda item 4A4 4 of the action items from the public participation. Uh, as I'm sure that you are very familiar with this process, Lee, uh, it is always good to leave as much as your five minutes for questions um, uh, but, and, uh, and, and not use up the whole time with the, with the actual uh, substance of the document which you have distributed. So Lee, I hand over to you. Hi, hi there everyone. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, well, my presentation is uh, four minutes, so there won't be a lot of time for questions. And uh, what I've done is tried not to make my presentation sound like a Sermon on the Mount presentation, and I've written it with grace because I understand how much pressure you're all under. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Um, I come to you today with a strong social conscience and compassion for the affected of um, due to C19. It would be fair to say that all of us in one way or another will be on the receiving end of C19. While we're seen to be winning the battle against C19 being a district with very few confirmed cases, the long-term recovery will no doubt leave many households financially strapped, mortgage, power, food, insurance and rates being the key outgoings. Our district has successfully ridden on the back of strong revenue from tourism. Since C19 burst upon us, it is clear the tourism industry is on a slow growth recovery for some time, leaving much of our district struggling financially, mentally and emotionally. The stark reality is, is that our district is now no longer the wealthy environment that we have proudly claimed it to be. As we progress and dance through these huge changes, there will still be many hurdles to cross and opportunities to open up from this enormous change. I'm sure you'll agree with me, huge period of economic and social construction lay ahead of us. There is an opportunity for council to prepare to survive sustainable waiting. That is achieving and surviving the unknown for perhaps 12 to 18 months or more. It has never been more important to ensure that every cent and dollar of the ratepayers' money is justified and quantified, e.g. spending for necessity, not for nicety. The government is working hard to sustain a financial relief path for the affected. On behalf of the people of this district, I'm asking this council to consider a similar approach with rates relief and cost savings as a matter of urgency. Everything you do matters. 
what matters the most is how you as elected leaders conduct yourselves with care for the ratepayer, both commercial and domestic, through this time of need. You have the opportunity to lead and govern this council with integrity and compassion through these times, making critical decisions like no other elected member before you. This will be your legacy. I ask that you move quickly on rates relief. Increasingly, pressures will be mounting as we continue through these uncertain times. I'd like to thank Harry for highlighting rates relief in the recent rates newsletter, but we need to go further. With section 96 of the Local Government Act in mind, I ask that you immediately waiver the 10% late penalty for the next two quarters, including the areas of the arrears penalty for rates unpaid as of 30 June 2020. This is to be a given to all ratepayers. The 10% penalty should not be revenue relied upon even under normal circumstances. Adjust the threshold of rates adjust the threshold of rates rebate during the recovery period. Urgently review your remissions and postponement of rates policy to include rates relief during an official national crisis, such as a national pandemic and the likes of. For the last quarter of the current financial year, under these rating policies, it may be possible to remit or postpone all or part of the rates payable in some rating units. I ask that you urgently investigate this option. Please communicate your decision on rates relief on the Council homepage. I noticed this morning there is nothing there relating to any current call of rates relief. Over the next six to 12 months, complete cost savings analysis through all aspects of Council. Undertake a business as usual transformation to operate in the unknown for at least 12 to 18 months. Forecast lockdown bottom. What would that look like and how to, would that be managed with many unknowns that are yet to surface? Continuing to believe that you can operate as you always have is not an option in this new environment. And lastly, consider core functions to be ma a main objective for the next 12 to 18 months. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Lee. Um, how are we going for time, Suzanne? If you could just uh, possibly give me a... 40 um, seconds. 40 seconds, we'll make this quick then. Um, now, I'll open this up for questions. I have a first question as well, though, if I may. Uh, yes. Um, you're proposing a 10%, uh, we waive the 10% late penalty and the threshold for all rate payers, even those that may be able to pay without suffering or pain. Did you, in your submission, we're preparing your submission, uh, assess the financial impact of this suggestion? Uh, yes and no, and I think that's something that really needs to lay uh, back in your core because I understand the pressures that you're under you're undergoing. So, really, at the end of the day, it's really up to you um, around how you want to to manage through this. I suppose um, it's a hard one. I know, Alex, uh, and it's going to be hard on both sides. But there must be somewhere where we can come to some kind of balance on how that how that may um, play out for people who can pay. I, I believe people who can pay will pay, Alex. They won't be late. My my direction is really merely for the people who are struggling. And they and that will that will play out as we go through recovery as well. Cool. Time, time is up now. Does any uh, councillor have anything else they wish to um, ask Lee Pryor? We will discuss this of course during the main main body. Uh, Alice, do you have a question? I think this will unfortunately be the only one we've got time for. Yeah, hi, Lee. Thanks for that. Um, I, uh, I took all those notes through. Um, just one question, uh, one part that you raised. You talked about um, analysing core functions. Like, I'm new on the council, and certainly, um, and you've probably got more experience in this than me. There is very little fat in the system anyway. So I'm just wondering what you think the council does that isn't core function at this stage. Um, uh, a couple of things. I think we need to put uh, personal agenda projects on hold. And um, I talk about uh, projects that may relate to uh, uh, items that aren't sitting in water, roading, and uh, the key, you know, infrastructure. I, and I don't want to pick holes in things, but we, we need to really just put aside 
things like sports and town halls and and recreation just in just in the meantime not forever but just over the next year we really need to focus on core functions till we understand where that's why i say we need to understand where the bottom line of lockdown is going to leave us um, i would also uh, question too just quickly how much money you're going to be giving to people and i know that last year i think we gave around one hundred and seventy six thousand dollars out to people who were um oh, actually i'm getting into annual plan stuff sorry but that that area needs to be capped probably for the next year thank you lee um, i'm sure sense. yeah i'm sure more information will be made available to you once the consultation documents come out and i'm sure most of your concerns you've raised today are going to be addressed anyway thank you okay, very much thank you. Thank you. Right. So now we're moving on. Um, let me get into the guts of uh, the meeting today. So we uh, move on to item B1, which is the adoption of the 2021 Annual Plan Supporting Information and consult doc uh, Consultation Document. Uh, item one, um, do I have someone move that we receive the adoption of the 2021 Annual Plan Supporting Information and Consultation Document? We are Brian Jepson and seconded by Pip as well. Uh, thank you for joining us, Ross. It's good to see your smiley face. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Yes, you aye. will have to unmute yourself, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. Aye. aye. Okay, Ross, all those aye. against? Aye. The motion is carried. Uh, who's, got, who's got a phone ringing in the background there? Uh, okay, so now we're going to move on to this. Um, so prior to me handing over to uh, Mr. Wilson, uh, let me overview the document that um, has been tabled and how's it, how it has come about. There's a quite a long preamble from me in that. However, I'm going to um, say that over the past six months, we have been aware of areas where underinvestment has led to a less than ideal council capacity and delivery. Uh, additionally, where rates have not increased to allow these deficiencies to be addressed, and uh, pre-COVID analysis was pointing to an over 11% rates rise to bring the council into what I would consider an acceptable level of delivery of services. This plan, but our landscape has changed considerably in the last two months and your council recognises and understands the pressures on its residents in an uncertain environment. This plan will continue with our water and wastewater upgrades, our increasing our capabilities, our resolution of Greyhound sports issues, and our support to the communities. None of these are personal agenda items. We will continue to improve our roads, our pensioner housing, and our cycleways and we will continue to employ and engage local people and businesses without retrenching and damaging our economy further. Uh, we have reduced our proposed rates rise to a very minor amount with an increase in borrowing to accommodate the shortfall. What we will put forward to the public, I trust you will agree is a balanced, reasonable response to these pressures without continuing to neglect our responsibilities and still advancing infrastructure investment. Please also bear in mind that this is a, not a resolution. This is merely presenting to the public a plan for them to comment on via the consultation process. Full democratic processes on seeking comment from the public will go ahead and the public's opinion will be taken into account. Now I'd like to invite Mr. Wilson to provide us with an outline of what we're considering today, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so uh, without reiterating and restating <coughs> what you're doing, this is a plan for consultation. So this is what we're, we are thinking of doing and we invite the public to actually provide their response to see if we're investing in the right places at the right time in the right way. So um, starting with the first item in the annual plan, which is probably the most significant, is investing in water supply, wastewater and stormwater. So uh, um, over the past time that I've been here, certainly, and previously, um, we've experienced real issues, genuine issues with supplying um, water, uh, managing our wastewater system doesn't contaminate our waterways, 
and we have a very limited stormwater system. So an important area for investment for council is making sure our water supply um, is, has sufficient quantity and is safe for people to consume. Um, so since we've taken on board, board Wellington Water, um, they've been very clear um, and the work they've done, which I, I applaud, has given us a good indication of where our weaknesses are and what we need to do to make sure that the security of supply and the quality of the supply with redundancies and the sense of checks and balances in the system can actually meet um, our, the standards that are set by the Department of Health for water, water quality. So we are proposing a significant investment in water um, and we need to do that. So um, critical to this is actually making sure that we have um, secondary systems. Um, so we have not just a primary system, but a secondary treatment option that actually makes sure the checks and balances are in place to ensure safe water supply. So that includes um, ultraviolet disinfection, filtration equipment, and this, the plan specifies when and where in this year, as remember it's an annual plan as opposed to a long-term plan we need to invest. Second aspect in that is also thinking about um, the amount of water, the quantity of water that we have to support our towns and our community. So um, we want to invest in water resilience. Um, there's a major project going on um, across the region to make sure we understand where our water supplies are, particularly in terms of groundwater, so we can make prudent investment decisions. We also have to make sure our wastewater um, is discharged in a manner or that supports basically our environmental responsibility. So we need to make sure that we are disposing to land where we are able. And um, we also need to be thinking into the future about what wastewater disposal will look like in the future. Can we reuse water? So there's some things we need to think about for the long-term plan, not just the annual plan. We also need to think in that context about um, water races. Um, so water races are a unique feature of this part of the community. Um, they were established in the 1800s, late 1800s, in terms of um, supporting stock water supply and environmental standards have changed. We recognise the um, importance this has for supporting our productive um, economic area around farms, but equally we need to balance the environmental impact that these have. Um, stormwater, um, we do not have a significant stormwater network, but we do have hotspots and we need to make sure we're, we're investing in those. So moving on, next is around um, a community ourselves, the people. So one thing's about um, what people need to survive. The second is about making sure that the community is able to live and enjoy in this wonderful place. So we need to look at our community and recreation. Um, we proposed last year a trial around swimming pool hours. Um, we've noticed an increase, which is exciting for young people in terms of um, participation and their physical fitness. And so we're looking at another trial for another year to see if that would, um, would work. But there is an increased cost for doing that. And so we need to weigh that up. Probably the most significant thing we need to think about is um, how we balance across our respective three towns and our communities, the balance of space that is available for sport and recreation. And so um, we, we've done some analysis in the last year around how the amount of physical space and green space and indoor facilities are available to our respective towns. Greytown has, has limited space um, and is growing, as are all our towns. But Greytown has had the benefit of a trust that has invested over time in those areas. The trust has had to think about its fiduciary duty and think about where it's invests to reflect not just the sports and recreation but across all the four world beings. And it has made calls to make sure that it has sufficient capital to invest in operating accounts to invest in community groups and support. And the, our analysis has shown that we've underinvested as a council, irrespective of the level of green space, um, in Greytown. So we're recommending and uh, 
going out for consultation, which will come out a bit um, later in this report, Karen will talk to about the reasoning for that we need to invest more in green space in Greytown. So this is a challenge of which town has the most. It is literally a challenge of making sure we get the right balance between the three towns and our rural community for access to sports for the young people and older people respectively. And so we'll come to that later in the meeting. The next area is around land transport. So um, we all recognise the importance of people moving to and from their places of work, where they live and how they recreate. We need to make sure our own network is fit for purpose and meets a, a consistent level of service, not only in our district, but across Carterton and the wider wire wrapper. So the people using the network actually um, experience the same level of safety, of the same level of um, ability to move. So um, we, we want to make sure that we are investing in maintenance and renewals in the right way. So we're recommending some changes um, in the way that we invest. Nothing significant, it's just about keeping on the same. But there are some um, particular areas like money for forestry and trees, um, making sure our footpaths are not just on the road, but off the road and walking and cycling. In other words, the more people we can move to active mode, um, in other words, walking, cycling, and using our networks in a safe way, um, we, we haven't got this right yet, and we need to invest further on that. Waste is the next key area, um, and it's something that's very topical now, particularly in the COVID-19, which draws it into sharp relief, where people have experienced the 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 struggle to actually dispose of waste in, a, in, a, in the way they would like, particularly in rural and livestock blocks. So there's two answers. You can make sure that you provide more supply. In other words, people drop off what they like, or you can minimize it. Of course, we want to minimize it. You know, waste has a great carbon footprint, and we need to make sure that we minimize the amount of waste that we can invest, that we have to invest for. So the more the people minimise the amount of weights that goes to landfill, the more that we're able to save in terms of cost to rate pass. We also have responsibilities under the Resource Management Act to, to plan prudently for growth and make sure that some of the challenges and that people face where they choose to live are being managed. So we have, first of all, our district plan and we need to invest in our district plan to make sure that some of the opportunities and or the restrictions don't place people and their important investment decisions at risk. So for instance, if people are investing in coastal properties in an area um, where there's inundation for sea level rise, we would want to discourage that. So people are not making decisions um, without the information that supports some of those decisions. Equally, we need to plan for growth about where our towns and communities grow. So we need to be thinking about our spatial plan, which is a significant opportunity for people to provide feedback about where they think growth should, should work and where it shouldn't be. Um, we also have a wonderful opportunity with Dark Sky Reserve, which would change the face of our tourism industry. Um, which actually takes it not just from summer tourism in the peaks to actually making sure that there's winter tourism and actually allowing a lot of our businesses to ensure that they are able to operate not only in the summer but in winter. And part of that is making sure that the lighting that affects our dark sky is managed. The final area um, that we want to invest is actually building capability within the council itself. Our council, um, unfortunately, um, has underinvested in its staff capability and capacity. And we need to make sure that all the areas like systems and processes, our staffing, our accommodation for people, um, is, is at a standard, not a gold standard. It's, it's literally like a Toyota, but just it's literally making sure that we have the right people in the right place to do the right things. One of the things that the, um, the COVID-19 shut down has sharpened to high relief is our ability to work remotely. 
we were way behind the eight ball in terms of systems. We still rely on people actually having to pop into the office to pick up paper files. In this modern day of technology, we should not have to do that. So making sure we're investing in the right places um, to do the things that we need to do in a way that actually supports our community is really important. Um, by contrast, a number of councils around New Zealand, in fact, the majority have been able to keep some of those non-essential services going. We haven't been able to, and of course that impacts on our building industry, our construction industry, and people who want to do, want to invest here, which is really important. The final con um, thing that Alex and the Mayor, sorry, Mr. Mayor had mentioned is the affordability, which we have balanced. So yes, we need to make sure we, we are providing services and we need to make sure we're doing the right thing, but also we're recognising the affordability that that and risks that places on people in our area. Hence, uh, um, we, we, we intend to make sure that we are covering our income and our revenue. And so the costs to council are significant to try and lift um, the services we need to provide. Um, for you as rate pass in terms of water eroding and so forth. These are not costs to council itself. These are costs in providing the service, but of course there need to be staff to support that and systems and processes. Hence we are, as um, the Mayor alluded to, um, supporting a, using our balance sheet as a bit like a mortgage, is making sure that our mortgage um, which fortunately is very low and with the lowest level of repayment, we can use to make sure that it doesn't impact significantly on our rate payers. So we are proposing to provide services in a way that doesn't impact. So even though the Mayor intimated there was a 2.45 rate increase uh, as an average and the dollar value of that rates, I want to note that on average for residential versus rural properties, um, that average tends to, um, for a, a residential property, it'll be about 3.32, which is a $2 impact. And for rural properties, which we need to make sure that we're supporting in terms of our rural, root, uh, our rural economy, it's less than, it's, it's just over 1%. So um, people that are providing our primary production and supporting our economy and Balancing out our rating impacts, we're recognising that as well. It's not just buried in average. So um, that's a summary of the things that we are proposing and asking people to give us our feedback about. There are also things like our fees and charges. So we need to make sure that we're keeping up with our fees and charges for buildings and for um, land use consents and all the activity that we're doing. They recognise the cost um, to creating that, but also balances making sure that we're not overcharging in terms of people for the, the difficult situations they're in. So please have a look at particularly those businesses, look at our fees and charges. We think they're reasonable. We've made a, a slight adjustment and some have actually lowered. So there's a bit of balance in the way that we present that. And same with our venues and um, the way that we charge for our own council um, buildings as well. So um, we encourage people to have their say. Remember, this is a consultation document. We're looking forward to community feedback. We need your feedback so council in turn can make decisions about um, where you as members of the community or people in the community think the, um, the our expenditure and our income should be driven. We are an important part of the whole South Wairapa economy. So a lot of businesses depend on us. So simply limiting our revenue and our expenditure, we've got to balance very carefully. So we support a lot of small businesses, um, contractors and so forth. If we limit the cash flow to them by restricting services, it impacts on their businesses as well. We are one of the larger employers in the in South Wairapa. So the important thing here is um, to consider um, what we think is the important things to invest in. Um, we're looking at opening the consultation to the public on the 24th of April and submissions close on the 24th of May. And we are really interested in people's views. 
So to support you, Mr. Mayor and councillors in making informed decisions based on public feedback. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's my summary. Are there any Thank questions you. relating to that? Cool. We, um, if we could just remove the, um, uh, the document. Thank you. So we can see everyone. Before we um, do go through to questions, I just like to, and I apologise to Lee Carter. We have actually, I have made a, uh, where I should have had A4, which will now, I will now have submissions from the public participation or uh, actions. I will now have that as item, agenda item C1, uh, and we'll do this following um, um, uh, uh, the, the actions that we're currently undertaking with regards to the consultation document. Right. Uh, so now we're going to open it up for questions. So the, who would like to, do we have any questions of Mr. Wilson or the council officers regarding this? Alistair, I see you've got your first hand up, so go for it. Yeah, Harry, thank you very much for that. And could I commend the, the staff on the work that's been done in trying circumstances? And I think all the councillors would agree that they've done a great job putting this together. Um, Harry, I just want to clarify with you, um, and, and I suppose this fits into a bit what Lee presented in terms of what you presented um, core functions here for the council. There's going to be a great demand as we rebuild on um, capability of the council to assist the community. Uh, are you confident that this budget will allow us to um, provide that certainty for, for our community uh, and, and meet all the needs we need to, to make sure that, that we can help women through this rebuild? I take that in context about what Councillor, oh, well, sorry, um, what Lee said is about providing core services. So, um, in terms of providing the things that we need to do at the right time, this is a, a budget that will allow us to do that. Of course, if you have councillors had aspirations to do more than that, um, then this, this budget wouldn't do it. Um, but in terms of doing the right things that we need to do, um, in terms of restricting the level of investment to support our communities at the time they need it. Oh, this is perfect. Oh, thank, thank you, you. Alistair. Uh, uh, Garrick, we have a question. Excuse me, Harry. Yes, <clears throat> just looking at going forward in terms of the fees, in particular subdivision fees and things like that, are we in line with the rest of our colleagues in the wire wrapper uh, in terms of, you know, this, that uh, the South wire wrapper is not out on the limb? Uh, yes, we are. Um, the, so the way that fees are calculated is based on a, an assumption about public versus private benefit from the fees. So if you ask me if the line to line item about a subdivision fee, for instance, is exactly the same, it depends on how councils describe the public and private benefit from those, which, which do differ. But long story short, um, if you look at the, our fees that we're providing, depending on the scale of the subdivision, they actually equalise. So um, I'm confident that we're given in, in, in the, that context about the public-private um, benefit, we're about right. Thank you. Uh, good question, Garrick. I actually had that as well, because it is important that we are uh, comparable to the other councils within the region. Uh, who else has a question? Anyone? Uh, yes, Rebecca. Apologies, I'm working across two devices. Um, thanks, Mayor Bain. I just wanted to reflect um, very briefly going back to the uh, discussion topic number one. With uh, proposed legislative changes in terms of the NES um, environmental standards and with proposed drinking water legislation, are we, doing, are we proposing to do enough at the moment? Are we going to have sufficient funds there to do it? exactly what's required or is it just going to be the minimum? I'm hoping um, we make a step change. Um, so remember this is an annual plan. So the long-term plan will give us the context to actually decide where we set the threshold and what we invest and what we do. I think the decision that you as a council made earlier about Featherston wastewater um, and um, the opportunity to rethink the level of treatment that we provide for wastewater discharge is a good context to say that we want to go beyond what is set as a minimum. Um, so we're definitely in the place of trying to make sure that we are future-proofing our investment. Thank, Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make sure. Councillor Jepson. Um, yeah. Thank you for that, Harry, and thanks to the staff too. That's uh, this document's very good. Um, there's just one thing. I mean, 
we don't know where this COVID is going to lead to, and I'm just a little bit concerned. Is there any flexibility in this if the proverbial hits the fan and uh, things get a lot worse than what we were uh, anticipating? Um, yes. Um, so there's a couple of signs for that. I suppose the first is um, it depends on how the economy recovers. Um, and so, so I don't want to be I can't be Pollyanna or of a pessimist, and we have to we have to work that through. Remember, there's a whole lot of local government that's looking at um, where this could land and what it could mean, and I'm and we and staff are watching with bated breath what's happening across the country. The wire wrap is in a pretty good place um, and we have to be mindful of that. You know, so we have a number of really strong advantages in the economy. Um, the first is um, obviously our primary production. So the government is signaling um, terms of trade, overseas trade, balance of trade, that primary production is crucial to New Zealand's support. Um, we're, we're a, a food cradle. That's really important. Secondly, winery and um, winery and um, the associated benefits from that flow is really good. Um, tourism is the area that will hit hard, but I suspect that um, Martinborough, Greytown, and Featherston could benefit from an influx of domestic tourism, which is the way it's going. Um, so, long story short. Yes, there may be some short-term impacts, but if there's any economy that's well balanced to actually recover fast, I suspect our economy is just that. We have a large population of Wellington, an urban centre, and um, people are going to want to move out of COVID-19 and explore um, the world around them, um, as they have done in the past, but I think even more so. So um, in answer to your question, Councillor Jepson, I, I think, um, one, we need to be pessimistic in our view, but optimistic in our aspiration. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. Uh, thank you very much, Harry. Uh, do we have any other further questions for Mr. Wilson? Ah, uh, yes, uh, Pam. just unmute myself. Um, just, um, I agree with the others that this is a very well set out document and it covers, I think, a lot of the basics and um, and it's certainly going to provide the community with the opportunity to give um, feedback on all aspects of it. Just one thing I noted in the key dates is that we have a council meeting set down for the 10th of June. Are we going to be able to um, do the hearings and submissions um, on the same day as the council meeting or, or is that got something in motion already to fix those? No, um, you're absolutely correct. Um, that, that time frame we're, we are um, juggling um, to get it back in step. Thank you, um, Pam, superb, well spotted. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I think, uh, Harry, are we, are we looking at doing a change uh, to earlier in June for that council meeting? Yes. To, yeah. 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 But well spotted, Pam. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's also some questions on the consultation document. To be honest, if I may be relatively picky, uh, a couple of the graphs are not uh, where we have uh, our dispute, where we get our funds from and where we spend our money. Uh, the colour scheme is very confusing. They're very muted and similar to each other. And I'm just, as a comment, whether or not we could look at that, that to make it a lot clearer for the public. Um, of course we can. In fact, Mr. Mayor, what I suggest is you um, amend the resolution um, to allow staff delegation to fix typographical or visual errors in the report. Um, so, that, so rather than have to come back to council to fix what are, are minor issues, that you allow the staff to just go ahead and do that. Do we have anything further questions? Uh, Councillor Hay. Thank you, Harry. Um, I think it's an exceptionally well-balanced and thoughtful annual plan document, and I'd just like to again congratulate everybody who's contributed. Um, just, I've just got a super minor thing in section three. It uh, should read the Wire Wrapper Trails Action Group. Um, 
just a really minor detail. I did mention it the other day, but I think it's just slipped through the net and probably we need to be accurate in describing the group. Look, um, in the hurry that we've done this, um, I'm sure that the major points we're trying to make are right, but there will be minor typographical issues, and that's my comment to um, the Mayor, is that um, if you've got those kind of issues, send them through to us and we'll just make sure that we get them right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Depending on a delegation, of course, otherwise we'll have to come to a full back council committee meeting so you can change a couple of words. Oh, oh uh, sorry, yes, Harry, what's the date that we need to... When is this going to print? Um, uh, 24th. Um, and sorry, uh, Councillor... Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. Um, it's going out to consultation on the 24th. Um, Amy, are you there somewhere? I'll, ha I'll have to advise you. I'm sorry. Um, it actually goes to print um, next week. It will be, it needs to be finalised to go online by Friday and it will go to print next week. But we can't make changes, obviously, after uh, Friday when it goes online. Thank you, Amy, uh, and the sound of your children in the background. We love it. <laughs> Councillor Vickery, you have a question. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, question probably for Harry or Katrina. Do the, do the rates projections include the costs of holding finance to, to make the purchases for Greytown land, etc.? Uh, no, they don't at the moment. Uh, the figures that are there um, assume that... Um, are, you, are you talking about the Sports Hub, Ross? That's correct. Yeah. Well, what are um, the Sports Hub here? Sorry, yeah, the the, sport, the facility in Greytown. Uh, at the moment, no, the annual plan assumes um, has not taken that into account. So if we okay, decided to go with that, if the if the council's council decided to um, um, pro, um, continue uh, with that, um, that then there would be an additional cost to the ratepayers. Which has been outlined in the um, consultation document, I believe. That's great. There, thank you, Katrina. Um, and maybe for for Harry, um, and it's a, it's a question that's that's founded on ignorance rather than any any deviousness on my part. Um, there are some significant projects in this, and I, I totally get the point that it, that we must continue with things like wastewater, um, water quality. Uh, and other projects, um, do any of these involve a deviation from the long-term plan that's, that's currently in place? Um, not as such. Um, the difference between engaging and consulting is where there is a difference. So, for instance, the, um, the Greytown Sports and Recreation Hub is a variation for the long-term plan. Um, and so that's right. why we are consulting specifically on that document and um, the rest is actually a sense of, sense of scale um, so the the previous long-term plan did not contemplate the level of investment we needed to do to actually provide safe water supply and safe wastewater um, so it was there but not at the scale that we need to do to meet um, the standards that you would expect as a modern agency Lovely. Thank you, Harry. And no, no more questions, Your Worship. Thank you very much, Councillor Vickery. Are we all, all OK, or is there any other ambiguities that we haven't discussed here, or can we go on to voting on adopting these? Right, with that in mind, I uh, will do them separately. Thank so, you, Your Worship. Oh, yes, um, Pam. Um, Rebecca had her hand up. I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, OK, well, actually, uh, so, so did Pip as well. So we'll go to Pip first and then Rebecca. Is that OK? <laughs> Councillor Maynard. Um, I, I just wanted I just wanted to check um, some of the things that were raised um, by um, Mrs. Carter um, was uh, with 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 regards to um, looking at you know uh, the penalty freeze and things like that um, uh, would would that then is there some way that perhaps that 
not not as much in the discussion document, but with regards to our annual plan, um, where it is that we're actually looking at going with regards to that, I did note that Masterton Council had um, ha has done something similar um, with regards to their um, penalty fees, and so I'm, I'm just wondering where that actually fits in with this. But, um, if, if I, I could answer that, Mr. Mayor. So um, okay, we're bringing. We're bringing a paper to the council meeting on the 29th that will look at the variety of options that you have to support people in financial hardship um, and where um, people are struggling and we want to support people in doing that. I suppose the key element that we're looking at there is a case by case decision making. Um, as the mayor raised, um, there will be people who are able to um, work through this and so we need to balance that by making sure that people who can't are well supported. So um, in many ways, the paper will give you the options, but looking case by case decision making. Um, but that will require some review of our policies um, and our things that enable that to happen. So we'll bring that on the 29th. So it's probably the answer, Mr. Mayor, to the public participation question, but um, we, yeah. we have been seriously exploring that. Remember, some of the, um, the options do not are, are just about rates. So, for instance, if it is development um, that was um, planned prior to COVID-19 and people are unable to get investors, they will need um, the possibility of whether we waive the fees for that investment and so forth. Um, uh, Mr. Wilson, if we could continue that conversation through in the um, um, uh, in C1. Um, I don't think it's probably germane to this point, but we can raise that for, um, in, in reply to uh, Lee Carter's submission. I'm just answering the question, which is, yes, we have a plan to bring that to the <laughs> We'll go over it again a bit Thank later. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we have any question, other further questions, councillors? Right. So I would then, and this is going to be rather difficult for me to see who's mo uh, moving and seconding, but could I call for someone to move that we adopt the 2020-21 annual plan supporting information subject to the chief executive being able to make minor changes as a, of a typographical nature. <laughs> Do we have someone to move that? I'll move it. Rebecca Thank here. Thank you, Councillor Fox. Seconded. If you could speak up, possibly. Yeah, I'll do it. Thank you. Yep. Councillor Plymouth. Thank you. Um, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 All those against? And the motion is carried. Uh, you're okay with that, uh, Suzanne? Did that go smoothly and we've, we've ticked all the legal boxes there? <laughs> and we'll move now to item uh, number three, which we, had, we had, I would like someone to move that we adopt the 2020-21 annual plan consultation document subject to the Chief Executive making minor changes of a typographical nature. Uh, do we have someone to move that? Councillor I'll May. move that. Uh, a seconder? Yeah, me. I'll second it. Councillor Maynard, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Yep. Aye. All those aye. against? The motion is carried. Well done, guys. So now, uh, uh, can we remove that off the screen again, Steph? So I can see people. And uh, thank you. And Lee's still here, which is great. So if we could now go to item C, uh, the, the new item C1, which was A4, actions from public participation. Uh, do we have any uh, actions on the presentation from Ms. Carter? Does anyone want to have any, uh, ask any questions or make comments? Uh, Councillor Maynard. Um, so, so I just think that there were some really, really um, valid uh, points that were actually, and salient points that were actually brought up here. And um, I, uh, I also think that um, it, it is important that um, whatever, whatever decisions we make, then go uh, urgently onto not just the council homepage, but on, onto all of um, um, perhaps each of the ward pages as well. Um, to, to be able to be able to show what is being put in place, what is being looked at, which I understand now is going to be looked at on the 29th of April. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. 
Fantastic. Well, so, uh, yeah, and I just wanted to also say thank you very much because I thought it was a very good presentation. So much appreciated, Lee. Um, any other uh, comments regarding the public participation, people? Given that we, we don't have any more, um, thank you very much, people. This was a historic meeting, uh, but I now declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much.